In the research team, we have spoken about the catch-up process of the Spanish market since somewhere around 2009. And we were like postponing that recovery process after the double deep. And uh, finally, we got there somewhere after the second half of 2013. And we are talking about two years and a half of recovery. And uh, the way I put it now is that recovery has already finished. We are not uh, in recovery. It's a recovered economy, although it keeps its challenges. And the main challenges uh, could be, for a moment, uh, as we may know, uh, unemployment rate, fiscal budget, and the European context, for example, the uh, monetary policy coming from the ECB, which it's kind of, it, in its effects, kind of uh, dwindle, dwindling along the time. But it is there, a lot of liquidity coming in, uh, into the market throughout the ECB policy. And that's going to be a challenge, I think, uh, two years down the line. <clears throat> and also, uh, in terms of uh, or context, we can uh, talk about uh, different uh, uh, areas in which there is still uh, room for improvement. For example, southern Spain in terms of uh, unemployment. If you check out the map in Spain about unemployment rate, you see that the, there is a strong differentiation in terms of uh, what is uh, the picture in the north and the picture in the south. And that also it has its implications in terms of uh, real estate activity, occupation, and of course, the return of the uh, property investments that are seen by the different investors. But just to wrap up, my view is that, uh, as I already said, it's a re recovered economy, and we are uh, in ahead of the average in terms of uh, GDP expansion. Last year we expanded at 3.2. Now we're talking about the same expansion of GDP uh, in 2016. So what it is ahead is the, uh, the expansion of GDP for 2017. And uh, that is a lower number that we've seen so far in the last two years. And uh, that is like the accumulation as the factors, as I said, that are the challenges of the Spanish economy. So we're thinking that for the next year, the growth is going to be somewhere around 2.3, 2.5%, which is going to be lower. But anyways, as I used to say, it's going to be an expansion. So GDP in its size is going to be higher than in 2016 and by extension and in 2015. I think, the, uh, I think our house view is probably, and, uh, and, and I share that view, is that Spain, uh, there's a bit of a dis uh, misalignment between the recovery of the fundamentals, which probably really hasn't happened uh, completely just yet, or is starting to happen, but has not happened nearly as much as the, uh, the correction in the capital markets, which happened very quickly and radically in the last uh, couple of years. And as a result, to be honest, it's, uh, I think it's been challenging for us to find opportunities that are um, particularly compelling at the moment. Um, I think that, you know, well, we, along with many other people, uh, acquired things a couple of years ago, and, and those um, have, have worked out well and should work out well. Uh, at the, at the present time, it's a little bit more challenging due to uh, a, a range of factors and, and, and other actors that are, that are in, the, uh, in the market. And I think, you know, uh, UK aside, which is a, obviously a, uh, a special case, um, I think the other, the other markets across Europe, it's, it becomes a little bit more challenging to uh, pitch the Spain story. I think two years ago, it was fairly easy to pitch the Spain story. Now the recovery is, is, uh, is no longer in question, but um, you're really buying things that yields at which you could buy uh, in Germany or in the UK. You could buy potentially at a higher yield, uh, a, for instance, a better quality asset due to all the fluctuations in the markets there. And uh, I'm not saying that that's right or wrong, um, but it becomes a little bit harder to defend. I mean, in Italy, I, th I think it's fair to say we, we definitely see uh, more, probably more attractive opportunities probably in Italy. The challenge is that in Italy, it's much more challenging to operate. And so investors, including ourselves, prefer operating here in Spain. In Italy, we happen to have a competitive advantage of a, a captive um, asset management platform, which makes, gives us a competitive advantage. Um, but I think you really have to, uh, I guess the point is you really have to look for angles. It's not so easy as, uh, just buy everything that's in sight, um, uh, which maybe you could have made that argument a couple of years ago. What I can say is that uh, um, most of the of the funds uh, we manage are interested interested in, in investing in Spain, 
and the general perception is that it is a good moment to invest in Spain. As Greg said, n nobody uh, puts a question on the recovery. So, um, so this is something which is uh, on the grounds of most of the, of the appetite that we are perceiving around. The thing is that uh, the market is becoming hotter and hotter, and this happened uh, so quickly that uh, at this moment, uh, any business plan uh, is in need of, uh, of uh, the recovery to go to the fundamentals uh, in a level which is not yet there. And uh, if not uh, coming, or if coming uh, at a different pace, the returns would be compromised. And, uh, and this is uh, a situation which is certainly not improving. And at a point, it could, uh, uh, well, it could get some, some effect on, on the market. On the other hand, uh, there is so much liquidity and the gap that the Spanish market is supposed to provide uh, when it's compared to other European, with, with other European markets, uh, still uh, is, is attractive for the investors. But as, as Greg is saying, the, the, the prices are getting higher and higher, uh, not exactly in line with the recovery of the fundamentals.